you have doubts from the previous day? No, perfect, Sylvia. Yes, Carol, do you have doubts? Let me know. Tell me your your doubts. Ah, I said, I said, did I say only the again, guys? This is what was happening before. Okay, I'll fix it in a second. So did I say that the homework was only going to be the informal? Oh yes, only the informal, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to write it. Okay, so only the informal. For today, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, can I... Okay, so I'm going to do it. Now we are going to correct the informal, right? And the homework... For... Um, let, let's see. Today's Wednesday, so for... Writing formal homework for the 15th. Okay, it's going to be formal writing of part four. And today, now we are correcting the informal. Okay, I put it there just for. <laughs> for me to see what we have within these uh, weeks. So today we have to correct and the 15th we are correcting the formal writing. Okay, so you have one week. So now guys, I start passing the documents. Okay, give me just one second, right. Okay. Uh, yes, now I'm going to pass it, uh, Carol. Okay, let, let, let me pass it. I'm going to try to fix this because I don't know why the computer doesn't read my pen drive well. So, Give me one second, guys. Que se me ha ido otra vez esto. Ok, la parte que hay que hacer el próximo día la paso por aquí. Esto... This and this, this is the formal, I think. So today is, it was the informal and the following day is going to be the formal. If you have the formal already, this is good. Okay, we are, I'm, go I'm going to correct what you have. So, Sylvia, we start with you. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Okay. Good. 
uh, very good because you have copied this. Um, nice. I was very hopeful with that event. I don't know what you want to say. Like, I really wanted to go for something like that because I was very hopeful. Mm, I don't know. Tell me in Spanish, Silvia, what you wanted to say. Uh, well, yes, okay. We don't say this in English like that, but it's okay. Very good. They should have. They should have looked very, very good for another kitchen to celebrate the party instead of canceling. Very good. Eat directly. What do you think about this? I hope to hear back from you. Very good. Perfect. It was perfect. Okay. So a uh, good language. Uh, why? Why is this happening? Okay. I don't know, guys. All was perfect and uh, things that I like here, guys, um, Silvia is repeating something, but this is good. You're repeating something and she has used a passive. Okay, here she has written a modal perfect, which is great. Remember that you have to use discourse markers, okay, and after a preposition, you're going to put ing, so this is very good. You have a question, good, and then you have the structure of the informal email. No hay que ser expertos en informal email, okay? Just the structure. So very good, Silvia. I'm not uh, going to put your email away because this is perfect, so no corrections. And the content was good. Let's see, Carol's one. Okay, so guys, you see the structure. I don't know what happens in here, always in this computer. So the structure is good, okay? Because it, it's, it, it's got like several paragraphs, several parts. So, hi, I hope you are well. I miss you and for this reason, I was happy to meet you, to meet you at the party organized for tomorrow. However, I was sad when the organization told me that the party had been canceled. This is with double L, that's why it's wrong. Also, they aren't going to refund our money and they don't know if the event will be able to be held in the future. This is a more than perfect, Carol. Uh, because why? Very good, Carol, because this is the informal email and you are saying like, hi, contractions, very good. Here, another contraction, very good. And here you've got a conditional. Then you have in the same conditional, you have a modal and you have a passive to be held. Uh, for the rest, chicos, eh, la pasiva la vemos la semana que viene, por si alguien no tiene ni idea, okay? So very, very good because in this sentence, wow, uh, I was a little bit shocked. When I was going to answer to request a solution, I received another email. I have won two tickets to meet our favorite. Well, estaba bien, también sin la, sin la U, okay? Isn't it incredible? I would like to invite you. Uh, looking forward for your reply. Best, Carol. Perfect. Carol, just one thing. Here, okay, you should have said that instead of I have, like I've, okay? Why? Because you are contracting in here, okay? So just be consistent and that's it. Very good, okay? I'm going to put it away just... Uh... My God. A lot of, lot of folders, guys. Writings today. <laughs> it is going to be cold. Okay, so very, very, very good. Now I will pass it. I will pass everything. Uh, 
Fernando. Okay, I don't know if this is the, okay, 48 words. So good, I'm very happy. At the cooking club, well, I would say in instead of at. It is not very wrong, but I would say in. Bye. And you have to repeat, eh, Fernando, you have to repeat the subject. It is very interesting. I'm learning new re uh, recipes for cooking. Very good, because this is a preposition and ing, very good. In my house. Guys, in my house, I mean, it's not totally wrong. Not totally wrong, okay? But you are going to say at home. Aprenderos esto. Cuando estáis hablando de vuestra casa, no se dice house, sino que se dice home. Y no se dice in my, in my house o in my home. Decimos at home. Suena más eh, coloquial. Uh, the food that we cook is very healthy because we use here the only. We only use natural products. So only was before the, the verb. The changes have been very positive for the class group. Take care. Okay, very good, Fernando. Very good. Nothing to say. Uh, good. Rafa. Forty-four. Mm -mm -mm. So it is. It is right. It is forty-four. It is from a third, yes, so it, it, this seems to be very, very, um, very small, but I think it is within the, the words. Last day at the cooking club, we were a new food. I don't understand this, uh, Rafa, we were a new food. Let me see what you are writing. Okay, so... Um, I don't understand. Last day at the cooking club, we were a new food. Nosotros éramos una nueva comida. O nosotros hicimos. What do you, what do you want to say? So this is, uh, I don't understand this. Uh, we, we, I don't, I don't know. Nosotros uh, éramos una nueva comida. We tried some new food. We tried some new food. Probamos diferente comida. No sé lo que quieres decir. Así que eh, voy a intentar suponerlo. We tried some new food. O oh, hicimos. We make. We made. Because this is in the past. Eh, some new food. Okay, you're going to put some because this is uncountable. Okay, so this, this is not grammatically incorrect, but it, has, it hasn't got any sense. This food that we prepared them was very delicious. I think you would be able to wake it. I don't understand this. To wake it. If you want, I will teach you. I will teach you. Siempre necesitáis un, un pronombre, eh, objeto. To make it tomorrow, okay. But I think you would be able to make it. I suppose eh, you wanted to say make it. So be careful when uh, when doing your your email, okay? Just reread re in the exam, reread, okay? Releed en el examen, porque a lo mejor os equivocáis de tecla y ya pues contáis otra cosa, okay? Let me see. Sí, sí, sí. Ahora voy a pasar. Es, las estoy guardando. Ahora las paso todas. Las paso todas al final. Miguel. Let's see. Hi, John and Miguel. I don't know if you have received the same message as me, which the part, the food party has. Okay, yes, you forgot the farewell, Miguel. But I don't understand this. You have put like a relative clause 
has puesto una, una frase de relativo con el which, pero no has contado nada de, o sea, no, no pega. I don't know if you have received the same message as me. No sé si has recibido el mismo mensaje que yo. El cual, la, 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 la fiesta de comida ha sido cancelada. Puedes decir, which says, si quieres meter esto, que está bien, una frase de relativo, tienes que decir, which says that, el cual dice que, el cual dice que tal, 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 y así sí. I am very disappointed as I, el I siempre va en mayúsculas, ¿vale? Eh, chicos, os voy a decir cosas obvias, pero yo no sé si, en general, no te lo digo a ti, Mirel, no sé si, déjame ver si estoy grabando, yes, eh, no sé si es que os equivocáis a veces al teclear o que, o yo qué sé, ok, just that. I'm very disappointed as I was very exciting and thought... Thought it could be amusing and educative. Okay, as a result of canceling the party, they should refund our money back, but they can't. I hope the next party will be done on a date which wouldn't be seen by me, which in which I am not busy. En una um, en una fecha que se haga en una fecha en la que en la que no me tenga ocupado or something like that if you want to say something like that on a day in which simply I am not busy ok eh, o que no me ocupe por mí this is not uh, correctly done and of course the farewell so uh, this is a friend so I don't know hugs, uh, kisses, or see you soon, this is the, the see you soon, and then you sign, okay, uh, see you soon, or with love, or take care. Y el if se puede escribir if si va en mitad de una frase, yes. Claro, claro, Carol, so, sí, 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 solo se pone en mayúscula el pronombre personal I es el único que se pone en mayúscula siempre. Pero eso no quiere decir que la I se ponga en mayúscula. Ok, that's it. Ok, Miguel. Ahora paso todos, ¿eh? Ya sabéis, los paso todos para que lo corrijáis luego. O lo releáis o lo que queráis. Eh, no, 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 no. Eh, you're welcome, Carol. No, no. Siempre lo único que se escribe en inglés, esto no es alemán, en alemán se escriben sustantivos en, en mayúscula, no, en inglés solo hay, no todas las palabras que tengan i o que empiecen por la i, ok, Juan, sí. Hi Carlos, since the cooking club is changed, eh... Occasion for the pandemic. I understand what you want to say, Juan Carlos. Acá, como, quiere decir como ocasionado por la pandemia, but this is caused by, caused by, causado por, okay, caused by the pandemic. I don't like it so much because having to cook at home is too difficult, difficult con doble F for us. Very good. Y aquí me has puesto at home. Very good. I find online classes much more difficult and less entertaining. Good. Hopefully we'll soon doble o, be back to normal. Dot. See you soon. Okay. Uh, very good. That's it. And guys, what I tell you, be careful when, I mean, in the exam we read. Porque yo ahora eh, no estoy en plan examinadora. Estoy en plan para ayudaros. Digo, ah, mira, pobrecillo, se le ha olvidado la O, hay una F, o... Esto lo digo para todos, ¿eh? No para Juan Carlos. Pero en el examen van a decir, si un está mal puesto, no cuenta, ¿ok? Para que lo tengáis en cuenta. O sea, quiero decir que el examinador es examinador, no es, no es adivino, ¿ok? Porque Sun a lo mejor 
es fácil esa frase y se, se entiende, pero a lo mejor otra no, ok. So just be careful with that. Ok, Juan Carlos. Solo digo, todo, chicos, no, no os toméis nada personal, quiero decir, todo es para todos. A ver, here. Vale, el próximo día, o sea, en una semana hacéis el writing formal. En una semana, es decir, el próximo miércoles. Very good, received. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ok. Hi Ana, how, how is it going? I'm, a, I'm already a member of the cooking club. Hey, did you hear that tomorrow's dinner has been cancelled? They told us with very little time and I had already cancelled my plans. I hope it can be held very good. This is a modal and with a passive. Uh, in a few days, I was thinking of filling a complaint, but I don't think I'll get anything. You write to me soon. Escríbeme pronto, quieres decir, María. Porque si quieres decir escríbeme pronto, tienes que quitar el you. Porque si dices, you write me soon, ese eh, suena fatal. Suena como que, <ríe> yes, pues entonces, simplemente quitamos el you, ¿vale? Write, mm, write to me, mm, write me soon, write to me soon. Very good, ok, this, this was perfect, ok, because you, you are using some very good language, like, how is it going, this is an expression, Uh, you are using the informal with this expression and with hey and with these interrogative forms. Uh, very good. And uh, uh, they told us you are making use of, of the personal pronoun in the object case. Little time and I had already cancelled. Very good. Past perfect with the adverb in the middle. Very good. I hope it can be held a modal in the passive. I was thinking of, guys, cuando tenéis una preposición, luego ing, very good. A complaint, some good, good language about this, una queja. And different use of verbal tenses. Me gusta porque veo muchos eh, tiempos eh, verbales. Eh, present, present, past, past. Past perfect, passive, past continuous, eh, present, future, imperative. Okay, so this is the thing that you have to do. Veis, chicos, en, en cuatro líneas ya se ve si la persona sabe estos tiempos o no. ¿Me entendéis, no? Am, eh, por ejemplo, María ha metido aquí un montón de tiempos. ¿Vale? Very good. Eh, A ver. Writings. Good. Vale, sí, en to vale. Chicos, siempre ponemos sujetos, excepto en el imperativo. Acordaos de don't worry, be happy. ¿Ok? Don't worry, be happy, es un imperativo. Entonces, yo siempre, siempre, siempre pongo el sujeto. Hay veces que se puede quitar, eh, pero bueno, eso ya es cuando dominéis totalmente el inglés, sabréis, ya sabréis cuándo se pueden quitar. Pero de momento nunca lo quitéis, a no ser que sea imperativo. Acordaos de lo de don't worry, be happy. Ahí no pongo, si doy una orden a alguien, no, eh, no pongo el sujeto. Entonces, siempre ponemos el sujeto menos en el imperativo. Ok. A ver si me he saltado algo por aquí. Good. Ok, Marta. Task. Good. Ok. Hi, thanks for your email. It was wonderful to hear from your club. Really? Oh my God. I had arranged everything about tomorrow, but I can do nothing about that. Personally, I hope that I hope you can do a party better than this because you have to make up for it. Nevertheless, I'm I am sorry for the trouble of the kitchen. If you organize another event soon, call me. 
in short, I'm looking forward to going at the party. Thanks, Marta. Marta está perfecto, pero um, make it more like um, in this case, guys, this is perfect. Grammatically is perfect, but uh, change a little bit the structure, okay? Like uh, like this, okay? Because if not, um, okay, something like that. Okay, Marta, like, um, because if not, it seems like, una, a ver, una cosa es que hagáis el, los párrafos, ¿no? Pero tampoco hagáis una, una, um, una frase por línea, ¿ok? Entonces, así mejor, ¿vale? Visualmente. Pongo hi, luego un por, por qué escribo o, bueno, lo que yo quiera decir. Pongo un párrafo, bueno, esto también podría ir aquí. It doesn't matter. Es simplemente para que se vea un poco más de email, ¿vale? Very good. Ok. Uy. Me voy a imprimir. A ver. So, that was perfect, except for the structure. Be careful, guys, with this. Y luego nos paséis de las palabras. No he tenido en cuenta mucho las palabras, pero ahí, ya sabéis, las cuenta un ordenador. Os podéis pasar un poquito. Algo lógico. Eh, Marta, ¿cuántas veces puedo pasar? Eh, pues, a ver, algo lógico. Os pasáis ocho, no pasa nada. Si ya ponéis 20 más, ok, This, that would be the difference. Ok, Marta. Sí, porque si no parece que estáis poniendo ahí... A ver, writings. Writings today. Very good. Ahora ya cada uno que coja el suyo. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you just one minute to put this away, to find your writing, uh, to put this away. Put away es guardar, eh? This is a phrasal verb. Están todos, ¿no? No me asustéis. Put away, guardar. So I'm going to give you a minute to find your writing and put it away in your computer. Typed. Miguel, everything is typed. You're, not, you're going to do it on your own computer. You are not going to do it uh, on a piece of paper. Uh, I think so. Uh, you've got the dates of the exam in the group. Let me see the dates, okay? Um, you are at this general. Okay, you are in this group. Okay, let me see the, I'm, I'm seeing the dates. Let me see in Madrid. Uh, I suppose, yes, but I cannot see them. Solo me deja ver hasta Julio. Sí, habrá. Yes. Pero no, no me deja verlas. Habrá bastantes fechas, ¿eh? Don't worry about that. Ya sabéis, podéis elegir, eh, lo digo en español para que se entere todo el mundo. Podéis elegir la fecha que, que, que queráis. ¿Vale? Si queréis, en, si queréis hacerlo ahora en agosto, al terminar las clases, guay. Si queréis esperar a septiembre, pues guay. Ok, but Miguel, you have already paid or not. Ah, ok, 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 ok. If you have paid, of course, you are going to receive an email.
Aha. Yes. So you are going to do it on July. On the 23rd. Okay. Good. Good luck. Okay. Let me see now what we are doing today. This is going to be a reading. Today we're going to practice the reading, okay? We were seeing the modal verbs. Ah, I'm going to pass another a, a PowerPoint just in case you want it about the modal verbs. So this is uh, the PowerPoint. Okay, you have a PowerPoint. If you if you consider that this is useful, you have the theory about modals, and that's it. And now we are going to do a reading. Let me find it. Lo he sacado el reading ya lo he buscado 40 veces, pero se me ha se me ha desconectado el pendrive también 40 veces. Eh... Here it is. Okay, I'm going to oh, I'm going to pass it. So this is what we are doing now. Uh, hello. Okay, give me just one second. So we are doing uh, from the reading. We are doing part three and part four, the most difficult part. Como me dijisteis la otra vez, ah, pues en, la, en las que más dificultad tenemos, es, eh, hay gente que decía la 3 y gente que decía la 4, vale, pues vamos a hacer la 3 y la 4, porque ya sabéis que los dos primeros son más fáciles. Give me just one second, que no se pasan los... Los readings. Ok, this, now, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to give you time to complete this. Okay, this which is part three, which is uh, guys gap fields. So this is very easy. I'm going to give you time and I'm going to pass it also mm, part four. Okay, so you have some minutes to do both. You have to do both. Hacéis ambas partes, vale? Now I'm going to pass the other Okay, guys, so there you have both parts. So now you work on your own. Now I'm going to give you some minutes. Okay, and you do both. If you don't understand some words, please go to word reference and write down the words that you don't know. Okay, so that you can improve your vocabulary.
Okay. Let's see. The giant panda. Okay. So, uh, well, you have read it, the text, so it is about the animal, blah, blah, blah. You have read it, so I'm not going to tell you. And let's see. Uh, it is said that in the first, it is B, so known, the giant panda, also known as panda bear, también conocido como. Okay, también conocido como, so this is the part participle. It is easily, well, is a bear native to South Central China. It is easily, second is recognized. It is easily recognized by the large distinctive black patches around its eyes, over the ears, and across its round body. The name giant panda is sometimes used to distinguish it from the mm, red panda, from the unrelated. You need an adjective, okay? Unrelated red panda, though it belongs to the other carnivora, the giant panda's um, diet. Okay, is over 90, 90, sorry, 99 percent bamboo. Giant pandas, pandas in the wild will occasionally eat other grasses or even meat in the form of birds, rodents, or carrion. In captivity, they may be fed honey eggs, fish, yams, shrub leaves, oranges, or bananas, along, along uh, with, okay, junto con, especially prepared food. The giant panda lives in a few mountain ranges, cordilleras, okay, range cordillera. In central China, mainly in, well, I don't know how to pronounce this, but also in neighboring Shanxi and Gansu, bueno, digo, no sé, no sé chino, vale, per perdonadme. Sadly, as a result of farming and deforestation, the giant panda has been driven, has been driven out of the lowland areas where it once lived and is regarded as an endangered species, especie en peligro de extinción, endangered species. This is the important vocabulary that you should know. That's it. Okay. So I repeat, I repeat, uh, one B, two I, three C, four F, five G, six A, seven eight, uh, eight E. That's it. Okay. 
So we just correct. Was it good? Tell me in the chat. Was it good? Yes or no? Okay, not bad. Five two also, okay. Very good, very good, Marta. Seven out of eight. Llame es un camote, eh, como una, no, no es una patata, es, es un camote, o sea, <risa> chicos, no, no, no necesitáis saber ese vocabulario. Y shrub, eh, shrub leaves, eh, es una, son unos tipos de, de hoja, pues shrub es arbusto, matorral, entonces pues, eh, pues una hoja de, de un arbusto. Bueno, boniato eh, no es exactamente jam, jam es camote, <risa> ya nos ponemos específicos, porque boniato es sweet potato en inglés, sweet potato, patata dulce. Eso ya, bueno, tampoco es que sea experta en patatas, pero <risa> sabemos que es algo parecido a una patata, ¿ok? Con eso nos, nos quedamos, ¿ok? That's it. Very good, eh, Miguel. Five out of, out of eight. Good. Eh, ok. Let's see task four, which is matching headings. Ok. Unir eh, los títulos a los diferentes eh, párrafos. Ok. It says the honey bee. So, um, zero is the, the one which is already given, which is C. So, zero is C, the origins of the name of, of the B. Okay, good. Paragraph one, okay, it is about, uh, it is talking about the human beings, blah, 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 domesticating, blah, blah, blah. It is, no. Domesticating, exactly, domesticating the bee. Okay. Mm, here you have this. Domesticating the bee have been domesticated. Okay, just try to find the evidence. Para aprender vocabulario está muy bien que os cojáis esto y, diga, y, y que digáis, a ver, qué palabras no me sé, evidence, ay, venga, esa la busco, ah, vale, que es una prueba, que significa prueba en español, vale, me lo apunto, pero en el examen, no os estoy diciendo que no lo, no lo leáis, ¿eh? os estoy diciendo que no hace falta saber todas las palabras, es decir, en el ejercicio que hemos hecho, nos da igual que jam sea camote, batata o, o lo que sea. No, porque no lo necesitamos por el contexto. Pues eso es lo mismo. Hay palabras que podéis no saber, pero mmm, no van a ser necesarias, ¿vale? Como aquí, domesticating the bee to have been domesticated. También tened cuidado con esto porque a lo mejor pone una palabra en el párrafo que el propio título contiene, pero es como una trampa. En este caso sí que es así, ¿ok? Let me see this. La tres, no, we will see three, we will see three because it is domesticated in the B, so it is telling you that, uh, of course, the, there has been a domestication and in the, since ancient times, so it is talking about beekeeping 
and that they were brought to North America in this year. So it is about the domestication of the bee, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see paragraph two. Paragraph two is A, the hierarchy of the bee colony, okay? So you know the, about the queen, the workers, or okay? Eh, the drones, por ejemplo, chicos, no tendréis que saber la palabra drone, porque drone es una palabra específica para denominar a un tipo de abeja. ¿Me entendéis? O sea, no hace falta saber ese, esas palabras. Ok. Porque para saber esas palabras, chicos, no es saber inglés o español, o inglés o alemán, o inglés o ruso. Es saber de abejas, ¿no? Es como lo de jam, si es camote o batata, pues es que ya no es eso saber inglés, es que eso ya es saber eh, de hortalizas, ¿me entendéis, no? Ya sabéis siempre lo de la abeja reina, que si las trabajadoras, esta es la, la, la jerarquía de la colonia de, la, de las abejas, ¿ok? So, this is it. I'm trying to find some evidence for you and three... Uh, 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 uh. Well, it says about beekeepers, domesticated, aquí es exacto, os, os acabo de decir, muchas veces va a contener la misma palabra y puede ser una trampa. But uh, here precisely is talking about the importance to farming worldwide. It is, it is, es lo mismo, pero worldwide, ahí tenéis la clave, worldwide, globally. Globalmente, ok. Why is this important? Because you know that bees are very important because of the pollen, pollinization activity and so on. Ok, so we need bees. Let's see, four. Four is G, the distribution and habitat of bees. Ok, so the different parts in which they are found. So, where they are found mainly, that's it. Let's see, five. Five is H, usefulness in research. La utilidad en la investigación. Okay, so... Scientific studies, scientific studies, particularly in the fields. Field es un campo, campo de fútbol y campo, pues, de campo de la semántica, campo de la lingüística, campo de lo que sea, okay? Como en español. Of social evolution, learning and memory. So it is talking to you about this. Six is D, the life star cycle of an individual. Uh, well, they are telling you that they undergo a uh, complete metamorphosis, okay, and that they have different processes in order to become an adult. And the hive, hive es colmena. And well, this is the process, the process of the different stages in the life of a bee. And the last one is I, protein and liquid consumption. Okay. So this is this is about what the bees are feeding themselves with. Okay, what they eat about the about the pollen and nectar. Okay, their nutritional requirements, sus requisitos nutricionales. Okay, this is what they eat. Pollen and nectar, which is protein, okay? That's it. And here they, they talk about protein. ¿Veis? La parte más, eh, más difícil, que se supone que es la última, no es, no es tan difícil. Porque tenéis aquí clues, tenéis pistas. How was this? I repeat, I repeat the numbers, okay? Uh, 1F, 2A, 3B, 4G, 5H, 
6D, 7I. Okay, how was it? Very good, Marta. Very good, Silvia. Five. Okay, they were uh, eight. Okay, good. Okay, Juan. Juan and Maria, the same. Good. Good, guys. So this is a matter of practice. That's it. Um, very good. So that was everything. The reading, those are the most difficult parts, entre comillas, okay? Um, okay, so, we have just a few minutes. So, I remind you that next week on Wednesday, we have to correct the formal writing, okay? Eh, la semana que viene corregimos el último writing, que es el formal. Y a partir de ahí, eh, bueno, daré algún día más por si alguien quiere entregar, eh, ya, ya os lo diré la, la semana que viene, si alguien quiere entregar algo más, eh, por si os veis justos. Hemos tenido muy poco tiempo, la verdad, de clases. Eh, vamos a adelantar cosas y os voy a pasar un documento Let me find it. Hemos dicho que la semana que viene íbamos a ver la, la pasiva. Eh, no, el, el Wednesday, el... ¿Cómo se dice? Wednesday. El miércoles. Yes. Chicos, se me va. Dadme un segundo. ¿Y qué vamos a hacer ahora? Adelantar, porque eh, nos faltan 15 minutos de clase... Y os voy a pasar el tema de la semana que viene, es la pasiva, es lo último ya que, que veríamos de, de gramática, ya lo demás va a ser repasar, o si alguien tiene alguna duda, por favor, que lo diga. Si tenéis dudas, también lo podéis decir ahora, y explicamos lo que sea. Eh, os voy a pasar un documento en español para que podáis ir leyendo el fin de semana eh, las cosas que vamos a ver en clase. Ahora lo tengo que encontrar en español. So... Give me just one minute. Bueno, mientras, mientras lo busco, pensad si tenéis alguna duda de lo que sea, del examen, de lo que sea. Y os paso. Okay. Eh, voy. A ver, voy contestando. A mí se me da fatal lo del in, on, at... Vale. A ver, in es en y significa dentro. Esto es importante porque no es lo mismo decir in university, si yo digo in university, es que estás dentro de la universidad, dentro del edificio. Si, si dices at, at university, es, te refieres a la, a la universidad como institución o que estás por ahí, ¿vale? Eso es un ejemplo, un, una diferencia entre in o at. In, eh, normalmente para lugares, pero luego at es como una colocation. Por ejemplo, decimos at home, lo que os decía antes, no decimos in, the, in my house, decimos at home. Es como una expresión. Eh, at the bus stop, luego hay muchas cosas que van con at, pues porque sí, básicamente, ¿no? In lo vamos a utilizar con los eh, días de, perdón, con los meses del año. In July, in August, in September, at lo utilizamos con las horas y on lo utilizamos con los días de la eh, semana. Decimos on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. 
Ok. Eh, hay sede, sí. Sí, creo que es, en, no sé dónde es, creo que es en Alcorcón. El British Council, se suele también hacer en el British Council, que es en, está en, jope, ahora no me acuerdo de la parada, creo que es en la parada de Metro Iglesia, en Madrid Centro. Eh, estoy copiando lo de la pasiva, ¿eh, chicos? Ok, perfecto. Eh, more. ¿Con cuánta antelación? Eh, a ver, eh, eh, Silvia, no sé si ha quedado claro. En la zona sur creo que hay solo uno y creo que es en Alcorcón, ¿vale? Eh, ¿Con cuánta antelación? Pues mejor, eh, con cuanta más antelación mejor. A ver, chicos, siempre va a haber, siempre hay fechas de examen. Mm. Siempre, o sea, todos los meses y hay muchas, ¿vale? Y muchísimos días, a lo mejor de un mes que tiene 30 días, pues hay 15 examen, ¿vale? Así que no hay que preocuparse por eso. Claro, pero ¿qué pasa? Que todo el mundo se apunta. Entonces, ¿os acordáis de que antes he estado mirando, eh, que alguien me ha preguntado, no sé si era Silvia o Carol, eh, la... si, si había exámenes en agosto? Por ejemplo, no me deja acceder porque los exámenes de agosto suelen salir, por ejemplo, los tres últimos días de julio. ¿Me entendéis? Entonces hay que estar muy pendientes. Entonces, eh, podéis hacer una cosa, o apuntaros vosotros mismos, o decirle a Jorge, oye, que me quiero apuntar en agosto la primera semana y que os lo mire él. Entonces, claro, eh, chicos, ese es el problema, que no podéis ver, si os queréis presentar en agosto no podéis verlo ahora, o en septiembre, lo que sea, tampoco. Claro, es que luego se llena, se llena todo muy, muy fácil. Ya os estoy pasando. Ok, so, si tenéis alguna duda más, preguntadme. Os he pasado un documento con la teoría de la pasiva. Yo no sé si esto suena, si no suena, me imagino que esto sea, eh, lo habéis dado en el instituto, ok. Eh, this is everything that you need to know. Que, eh, chicos, eh, a ver, hay que tener lógica. Que si ya sabéis la pasiva, ni, me, ni miréis este documento. ¿Vale? Os lo voy a enseñar por encima. Ah, you are seeing now my screen. Ok. So, this is an introduction in Spanish, ok? Because I'm not going to be reading in the next class all of this if you can read it at home, ok? Uh, this is very, very deep in the, in the passive. You have examples. When do we use the passive voice? What is the passive voice? Why do I use it? Okay, the structure normally, if you read this carefully, this is the most important. Si tuvierais que leer algo, si nos queréis leer las 15 páginas y tuvierais que leer algo, pues que sea la primera. Okay, eh, aquí os pongo eh, cómo se traduce al español y que normalmente cuando en español tenemos se, por ejemplo, se dice, se oye se rumorea, ese C, cuando tengo yo ese C, en inglés voy a poner una pasiva, ok, so this is important, you have examples, tenéis ejemplos y traducidos al español, ok, a ver, que veo errores ahora, um, ok, the structure again, tenéis la estructura con, con los tiempos, esto no es reported speech, aquí no hay que cambiar tiempos. La pasiva es el verbo to be más un participio. Entonces aquí tenéis, eh, lo vais a ir leyendo y tenéis aquí diferentes ejem ejemplos. Tenéis la voz activa, en voz activa una frase y la misma en pasiva, ya está. Pasar de activa a pasiva. Chicos, esto nos lo van a pedir en el examen. 
simplemente eh, yo os recomiendo que en el writing metáis. Hay mucha gente que, que ha metido eh, una pasiva, entonces ya con eso valdría. Y la pasiva en todo caso puede caer en la, en la parte de gramática, pero no, te, no vais a tener que pasar de activa a pasiva. Esto, esto es simplemente, pues yo qué sé, si os aburrís, en vez de hacer crucigramas, pues os ponéis a hacer esto. Ya haremos ejercicios, haremos ejercicios. Ok, so, uh, aquí tenéis cómo se pasa, pues el bombero rescató al gato o el gato fue rescatado por el bombero, la activa y la pasiva, ¿vale? Verbos con doble objeto, esto sí que es importante, pero ya no por el examen, sino para que por el inglés, ¿vale? Verbos con doble objeto, pues porque llevan el complemento directo y el indirecto. Os he, os he puesto hasta esto en colores, ¿ok? Eh... Y luego, bueno, a partir de aquí, de las seis... Ah, vale, perdón, no, no son, no son 15 páginas. Eh... Let me see. Vale, son seis, son seis. Eh, tenéis la voz pasiva con infinitivos. Lo mismo, esto no entra, solo que si yo que sé, cogéis una, una estructura para meterla en el writing, pues genial. La voz pasiva con gerundio, como sería, y la voz pasiva con to be born. Sabéis que el be born es nacer y se utiliza siempre en pasiva. Es como una excepción, ¿vale? Entonces, ya está. Que alguien dice, ¿qué rollo todo esto? Pues por favor, esto sí, ¿ok? De todas formas, esto lo, vere, lo veremos en clase y haremos ejercicios de pasiva a tope. Ok, so that's it, guys. The class has finished. Just read what you can. I will be telling you something next day. Pero como hay gente que, por ejemplo, Miguel se presentaba el 23. Como hay gente que se va a presentar antes, pues eh, ya dejamos eh, toda la, la gramática dada. Y así tenéis tiempo para leerlo y para que os entren dudas. Y así el lunes me las decís. Ok. So that was everything, guys. Uh, have a very nice weekend and see you on Monday. Bye bye, guys. Bye, thank you. Bye bye. Bye, thank, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys.